how to determine the cardiac axis let us try to see what it means so first the definition which is the cardiac axis is the major or average direction of overall electrical activity of the heart mind you it is average let us try to understand this by drawing the anatomy of the heart this is the left ventricle the left ventricle is a larger muscular organ because it has to supply the blood to the rest of the body so since it is more muscular the electrical activity is more shifted towards the left ventricle which is known as the nat electrical axis let us see where the three limb blades are situated in the human body which are avl l for left avr right and avf for foot now we have another leads lead one combines the information of r and l lead two combining information of r and f and three and that of l and f combination the avl looks the heart from this direction avr from this direction and avf from this direction and the lead one looks the heart from this direction lead two from this direction and lead three from this direction now the AVL makes an angle with the L1 which is minus 30 degree with that of R it makes minus 150 degree with that of AVF makes a 90 degree angle and with that of 3 it makes a plus 120 degree angle I have cut out this diagram and I have placed it in the anatomy of the heart to make it much simpler. Let me extend the AVF and this is minus 90 degree. The AVL is at minus 30 degree angle. The lead 3 is at plus 120 degree angle and AVR is at minus 150 degree angle. Now, if the electrical axis lies in this region that is from minus 30 to plus 90, it is taken as the normal axis of the electrical activity any deviation which is from minus 30 to minus 90 it is taken as the left axis deviation shown here by pink and now any axis which is lying in the region of 180 degree to plus 90 it is taken as the right axis deviation which is shown by the blue color and we have another thing which is 180 to minus 90 which is known as the extended axis deviation so here this is the normal axis it is normal and this region has the left axis deviation this is the right axis deviation and here in the yellow it is the extended axis deviation it is rare now let us try to understand how leads work. The leads are nothing but a voltmeter which measures the potential difference. Now if our electrical wave is moving towards this pole then it shows a positive deflection. If it moves away from it, away from this point then it shows a negative deflection. Now if an electrical wave is moving towards this pole it shows a positive deflection and the same if it mo moves away from this pole it shows a negative deflection and the angle here you see is 90 degree now consider an electrical impulse which is moving from this direction from upside down and it perforates the paper and goes back of it now how the voltmeter is going to read it the voltmeter would read it as a straight line or the equipotential because the both the poles are reaching the same potential at the same time now let us try to understand what is the physics going on behind this consider a wave which is traveling in this direction since the electricity is moving towards this pole therefore the voltage at this point is increased or it has more potential comparative to that the other point has the less potential we know that voltage measures the potential difference, so it shows a positive deflection. 
that means the potential or the voltage is increased now if the electricity is moving away from this point then at that point this point the voltage will be more and the other point the voltage will be less so reversing the polarity so it shows a negative deflection now consider a wave which is moving upside down so in this case the both the point reaches the same potential at the same time so the voltmeter measures the potential difference so the difference between the voltage of this point is zero so it shows a straight line let us try to learn the vector diagram this is the lead one making zero degree angle this is the AVL fitted to the left limb here the AVR which is fitted in the right limb here is the lead 3 and directly below it is the APF fitted to the left foot and this is the lead 2. Let us consider AVF a positive deflection. Since it is a positive deflection, the electrical impulse moves towards the AVF like this. Let us consider another example. Let us take lead 1. Let us here take a biphasic wave. Since it is biphasic, it has both positive and a negative component. So, this is a biphasic wave. So, in biphasic wave, the electric impulse makes a 90 degree angle. To lead 1, this is 90 degree, positive reflection, so it moves towards the lead 1, and negative, it moves away from the lead 1. Now, let us try to understand how to determine the right and left axis deviation with the help of a quadrant method. Now, in the quadrant method, we are going to look at the ECG curve in the two leads, the lead 1 and the AVF. Let's take an example. If there is a positive wave in lead 1 and a positive wave in lead AVF, now trying to plot that in the vector diagram. Since at lead 1, it is positive reflection, thus the electrical potential, it moves towards the lead 1 in this direction. And there is also positive wave in the AVF, so it moves towards this direction. The resultant vector lies somewhat here. The resultant vector lies in the normal cardiac axis. So, our inference is going to be that if there is positive waves in both lead 1 and AVF, then the deviation is normal. So, there is no deviation or normal. Now, taking another example, if it is negative in lead 1 and a positive wave in AVF, plotting that in the vector diagram, since it lead 1, it is opposite or negative wave, so the impulse travels away from the lead 1. And since in AVF, there is a positive reflection, so electrical impulse moves towards it. The resultant is somewhere here. The resultant vector lies in the area of right axis deviation. So, it is going to be right axis deviation. So, our inference would be, it is a case of right axis deviation. Taking another example, if in lead 1, we get a, let us assume, we get a positive wave and AVF, we get a negative wave. Plotting that in the vector, in lead 1, it is positive, so it goes towards the lead 1 and AVF, since it is negative, it is moving away from the AVF. Thus, the resultant vector is going to lie somewhat here, depending upon the intensity. So, here, let us bring back it again. Let us uh, change a little bit. Here, we have, let us take a more negative deflection. Thus, amount of more negative deflection. Thus, the electrical impulse, which is negative in this direction, is more. So, resultant vector will shift more towards the negative of AVF. Thus, it lies in the region of left axis deviation. So, this is the region which lies in the left axis deviation. So, here our inference would be, in this case, 
there is left axis deviation. Let us take one last example. If in lead 1 there is a negative wave as well as there is a negative wave in AVF, that means in both it is going away from it. So lead 1 it is away from this and AVF away from this. So a vector is lying, the resultant one is lying somewhat here. It is known as the extended axis deviation. So in this case, it is extended axis deviation. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video and if you want more, subscribe to my channel. If you have any suggestions or comments, you can comment me or tag to me in the comment section below. You can also request me to make videos on any medical topic. Uh, for that, you can comment in my comment section below. This video I have made an electrocardiogram, how to determine the axis. I have tried to make it as simple as possible and to my level best to make it as understandable as possible. Thank you for watching this video.